Las Vegas. Home to the SEMA Show, where 150,000 manufacturers, buyers, and employees in the automotive industry meet for the world's largest car and truck convention. The public's not invited, but today, we've got your hot pass. Yeah, we got money, baby! Welcome to Power Nation on the Road. I'm Katie Osborne, and we are coming at you from the Las Vegas Convention Center at one of the best automotive experiences on the planet the 2018 SEMA Show. The Specialty Equipment Market Association puts on this exclusive, members-only party of new automotive products and trends, with 70,000 buyers attending from all over the world, checking out over 2,400 vendors. Now, as I said, SEMA is the largest automotive party, and you're not invited. But over the next hour, we're going to give you an all-access exclusive look inside the SEMA show. And to help me cover this almost 2.2 million square foot event, I'm definitely going to need some help. Exploring the world of hot rods and muscle cars in Central Hall is Mark Christ. If it's got a V8 under the hood and it's rear wheel drive, you'll find it right here. Now we've got muscle cars and hot rods, but we're really excited to show you the crossovers. I'm not talking about SUVs. Think more along the lines of a Ferrari powered Mustang. And in the south upper hall, we find Eliza Leone. Hi Katie, no matter where you're going or where you've been, the south upper hallway is all about off-road. It is an exciting new time for the wheeling community. Looking forward to that. And covering the massive world of trucks, it's our very own LT. Massive is certainly an understatement when it comes to describing the size of some of these lifted trucks. There's a strong showing from all the major brands. We've got Ram, Ford, and GM. And you can't forget about the lower trucks either. Today, I'm gonna show you some of the most current trends from the world of pickup trucks. And our roaming reporter around the event, Gannon Pritchard, he'll be starting in the south lower hall. I'm hanging out here in the South Hall where it's all show, all go. We got big wheels, we got tires, and we got cars. Everything from Bugattis to pickup trucks. And we're kicking off our coverage outside at the Factory 5 Racing booth where Dave Smith and his crew are building live here at SEMA one of their Daytona coupes. And we'll have a time-lapse camera capturing all of the action. Dave Smith, my friend, this is pretty ambitious. Yeah, it is. Everybody brings a car to SEMA. We bring a bunch of parts. We're building them, and you and I are going drifting. I cannot wait. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? Ready. ready. All right. right, do the honor. Let's go. Let's start the build. We'll check back from time to time to give you updates on the live build. But speaking of muscle cars, it's time now to send it over to Mark Christ, who has an overview on his favorite subject. Thanks, Katie. Well, I am here, and I am like a kid in a candy store. This is my favorite place in the show. I'm at the top of Central Hall in the Ford booth. Now, of course, we've got muscle cars like this Mustang here, and there's a bunch of hot rods in here, too, but there's also supercars. There's also a bunch more other stuff, a little bit of funky, some of it's foreign, some of it's domestic. You'll see what I'm talking about. Central Hall is home to rods, restoration, racing, and performance. This is where you'll find everything from super trick concepts to turbos and superchargers and even restoration components and engines. But the stars of the show aren't the parts, but rather the cars that showcase them. Two of the coolest cars this year weren't even American made. This radically modified Gullwing Mercedes and this deceivingly clean Ferrari 328. Super cool, but nothing compares to raw American muscle. Example, Copo. In 1969, Chevrolet launched the Copo Camaro, and only 69 were made, all with 427s borrowed from the Corvette, making it one of the most sought after muscle cars, till now. This is the 2019 Chevrolet Performance Copo Camaro, the 50th anniversary of the original 1969 Copo that changed drag racing forever. The Copo 50th Anniversary Edition has a 427 cubic inch LSX under the hood and is ready to roll in full race trim, right down to the slicks and skinnies and a parachute out back. After 50 years, they've done it again. And you better hurry with your order, cause they're only making 69 of these as well. 
One of the wackiest and coolest cars here in Central Hall is this hybrid of Volkswagen and Buick. That's right, this bug is powered by a mid-engine V8 with a Buick Roadmaster dash, Buick side moldings, and functional portholes for the exhaust. Carroll Shelby and Enzo Ferrari would be rolling over in their graves over this car called the Corrupt Mustang. Why, you ask? Well, because it's a 1968 Mustang with a twin-turbo Ferrari F430 engine under the hood. Enough said, right? Well, there's more, like air suspension, full custom interior, custom paint, and big brakes, wheels, and tires. You Mopar fans, don't think you've been left out. We've saved this one for you. Never a disappointment when it comes to big power. Mopar's crate engine program delivered the 707 horsepower Hell Crate, but now they've raised the bar to a whole new level. Well, the big dog in this arena is actually not a dog at all. You could probably call it an elephant or a elephant. It's a 426 cubic inch Hemi with a supercharger from the Hellcat. Rings in at 1,000, you heard that right, 1,000 horsepower. There's horsepower and then there's star power, like this Steve McQueen edition 2019 Mustang Bullet, a tribute to the original. Speaking of the original, Well, I'm here with a car that needs absolutely no introduction, but I'm gonna give it one anyway. This is the actual car that Steve McQueen drove in the 1968 movie, Bullet. It's a 1968 Mustang Fastback. This is the greatest movie car from the greatest car movie of all time. This is the real deal with camera mounts, Highland green paint, and no badges. Just how it appeared in the 10 minute, 53 second chase scene that defined performance. Iconic because of its role, mysterious because it just resurfaced. But there's only one word to describe this car, cool. Thanks, Mark. We still have so much more to show you from SEMA, including some of the latest technology in the automotive world and Gannon taking a ride with the Hoonigans. Power Nation on the Road is brought to you by Covercraft. Keep your car or truck clean and protected inside and out with car covers, seat covers, dash covers, and more. And by Dustless Blasting, the world leader in surface preparation. Our tools make your toughest jobs easier. Welcome back to Las Vegas and the 2018 SEMA Show. Now, as we said earlier, this 2.2 million square foot event is so big that you can't even fit it all inside. Outside is where we find Gannon with the world famous Hoonigan team. I'm here with Zach with Hoonigan. Zach, What's up, brother? dude, thanks for having us. What are you doing today here? We're doing our live show. It's called the Endless Summer of Shred. Coax a bunch of our friends, bring their nice cars on, and basically destroy them. Well, I think what you guys do is a dream come true for a lot of people, and it's fun to watch you online, but it's going to be even more fun. So thanks for letting me be a part of the show, man. Of course, man. I'm glad we're giving you a ride along. Heck yeah. We're going yeah. with Danger Dan today. He's our best man. <laughs> Good luck, Godspeed, and uh, please don't die. America. What are we doing? This is one of our pride and joy cars. It's just an atrocious thing that we've built that is iconic for us. I mean, are we going to use a nitrous or what? I'm going to have to use a nitrous. I think it's pretty tired right now. Yeah. But it, it's it's our best car. Well, dude, I say we try to break it. I'm down to break this car. Let's break <laughs> this car. Then. All right, it's good.
we, we broke it. We broke it. We broke it. Oh, we broke it. Welcome. Yeah, that was awesome, man. Hey, we're having fun out here doing the Hoonigan thing, so I'm going to stay out here. You guys do what you do. <laughs> Thanks, Gannon. And you just never know who you're going to run into at this SEMA show. With me is the 100th winner of the Indy 500, Alexander Rossi. He won in 2016, but he was also a rookie. Can you believe that you actually won as a rookie? I can now, because it's been like three years. But I would say that it took like probably at least a year for it all to sink in and, and the magnitude of that day. And um, it obviously forever changed my life. I think you were a little bit of good luck, weren't you? <laughs> I think he's right. So we interviewed him literally like a month before the race on Power Nation. What does an IndyCar driver here at SEMA get out of the show? Uh, so I'm here kind of twofold. I'm here, A, to just check it out. I mean, it's an amazing show. I've never been to it before. To be here with Honda, um, to kind of promote the, the Baja 1000, the 50 first running um, that I'm going to be participating in the Ridgeline. Alex, is there anything that you want to buy here at the SEMA show? Uh, for the limited time I've been here, there is one thing that caught my eye. It's uh, the 2019 Honda Monkey. Yes! Thank you so much for spending some time with us today. We know you're a busy man here around SEMA. My pleasure, Katie. Thank you. Well, there are over 400 companies that are new to SEMA this year that are offering some new products. And of course, we've seen the boom of technology, that explosion in our industry. So of course, we decided to send LT out to get more information. Walking the halls, it's easy to get distracted by all the gadgetry here. Like this cloud-based system that controls your suspension with voice commands. Okay, level ride. What do you want me to do? Air out. But by far, the biggest buzz at the show was in the Chevrolet booth. When it comes to high performance cars, the first thing that comes to mind for most of us is a big displacement V8. This year, Chevrolet has totally flipped the script with a 2019 e Copa Camaro concept, and it has a 750 horsepower electric motor underneath the hood. Now, I know what you're thinking. A factory electric drag car may be a hard pill to swallow for some, but GM is suggesting this as a whole new avenue for Chevrolet's crate engine program. We designed it modularly and specifically so it would be a direct replacement for an LS. So it has a, a small block Chevy bull pattern, small block Chevy crank flange with the right spacing. So you literally put a flex plate on it and it bolts right into place of a regular small block or an LS Chevy. I, I look at it as, you know, I've got a 56 Chevy. This would allow me to literally take the crate package, which would consist of your battery pack and this motor module. And you could bolt it right in place. A shakedown at the track before SEMA, the e Copo laid down this tremendous burnout. And with its power to weight, they predict it will run the quarter mile in the mid nines. You know, people have been asking me all week, is this the future of hot rodding? I don't know, nobody knows. But the future of hot rodding must be based on the history of it, which is innovating and pushing and trying and different things. That's Jonathan Ward, CEO of Icon. And this is his 49 Mercury Pure Electric. Outputting 500 pound-feet of torque from two AMR motors, Reinhardt battery management, along with a Tesla P85 battery array made to look like an eight-cylinder flathead. Oh, and no transmission. In my humble opinion, transmissionless is the way to go. In a transmission, you're only going to use one gear, maybe two anyway with EV, and it's going to gobble up a lot of energy. So no tranny means 500 foot-pounds linear torque all the way through to 120 miles an hour like a freight train. Thanks, LT. Now I've made my way outside to the Factory 5 live build right next to Ford out front to catch up with President Dave Smith. Dave, break it down for us. How's the build going? Build's going fast. We're at SEMA. Everything's fast at SEMA. So we got the engine in, suspension, drivetrain, body goes on, and then we go driving. They're making great progress, so we're definitely going to be checking in with you, Dave. Still the common power nation on the road, the latest trends in off-road, and who the top 12 young guns will be. Stay with us. Welcome back to Power Nation on the Road, the 2018 SEMA show. Well, coming up, we'll announce who the top 12 young guns are. But first, let's send it on over to our off-road expert, Eliza Leon, who's in the Upper South Hall. This year's crowd was big, and the projects were even bigger. From body armor to recovery and everything in between, off-road is alive and well. You can't talk off-road without talking lift. Now, whether it is long travel, high performance, or leveling kits, all the manufacturers are here with the latest technology. 
Some of the best suspension manufacturers are well represented on the many types of off-road rigs in the hall. Solid beefed up axles are still dominant in the wheeling scene, but there are some big strides being made in the IFS, IRS side. One in particular is this bolt-on conversion for JKs. This system converts the full suspension into independent suspension all the way around and is run off of two portals, giving the JK a full 20 inches of travel and articulation. Trends come and go, and this year we're seeing a lot of overlanding and expedition type rigs with lots of overlanding accessories, and it looks like the full-size truck and SUV are making a comeback. Overlanding is hot, and let's just say that roughing it takes on a whole new meaning with all the new gear. Manufacturers are taking advantage of the overlanding craze and are designing for full-size trucks and SUVs. And it looks like compromise is no longer an issue for long excursions or adventure out in the wilderness. I have a soft spot for old iron, and I've seen lots of awesome resto mods. I've seen power wagons, wheelies, Broncos, International Scouts, and even this 100-year-old recovery rig. All of them with updated drivetrains and top-of-the-line suspension. So it just goes to show you that what's old is new again. New isn't a bad thing, but there's plenty of vintage iron here. And this year, there are lots of classic examples hitting the streets and trails with new engines, drive lines, and up-to-date, cutting-edge suspension systems. Visionaries, designers, fabricators, and manufacturers alike are committed and working hard to make builds perform like modern vehicles, but still have the rugged good looks of the loved classics. Old is definitely new again. Thanks, Eliza. Now, SEMA is a trade organization that represents the $43 billion automotive aftermarket industry. But it's not all about dollars and cents for SEMA. It's also about supporting the future generations of builders and designers. Here's Mark. Dreams are built for show at SEMA, with imagination and innovation running wild. And for those between the ages of 18 and 27, they compete with the best in the Battle of the Builders competition. SEMA calls them the young guns. One of the things we're doing is youth outreach, youth initiatives, things to help young people find a path to careers in this industry, but also to enjoy cars and trucks. And a program like the Young Guns helps spur that activity. And three in the Young Guns category made the top 12 this year. This 72 Datsun, a Wicked Street Strip 68 Nova, and a Wild 88 BMW M3. Zach, uh, tell us how you feel to be in this competition. Uh, it feels pretty amazing. Uh, certainly didn't think I'd be here when we started the build, much less uh, a few days ago. And tell me about your car. Basically got an F80 M3. We parted it out and put the drivetrain from that into our 88. It's the first known swap of its kind of the S55 engine into an older chassis BMW. It was the most trying thing ever, but it's all paid off. Well, we're here with Dylan. He's one of the top 12 finalists in Battle of the Builders, and he's also a young gun. What made you decide to enter your car in, in Battle of the Builders? Well, you know, coming to SEMA, you see this is kind of like the, the best of the best. The, you don't get any better than being in the Battle of the Builders. So to have an opportunity to come be in the Battle of the Builders and get this far, it's, it's really awesome, especially for somebody, you know, in the young guns thing is such a great thing. Every finalist here gets a custom SEMA jacket but there can only be one Young Guns winner. That distinction goes to Kyle Kuhnhausen, named the top Young Gun and placing fourth overall with his Datsun 240Z Hybrid. Kyle, how's it feel, man? I'm on cloud nine. I've been chasing this competition, following it for five years as I've been building this car since I was 22. To be here at this moment, my mind is blown. It's, it's uh, all the 5,800 labor hours, totally worth it. Tell us about your car. There's not a lot of Datsun left. LS power with just super robust powertrain, drivetrain with an aviation inspired interior. You won't find a part that doesn't function or isn't beautiful on one of my builds. So how many gallon fuel cell do you have under there? It has a 20. So impressed with SEMA chairman Wade Kawasaki, who had to see it for himself. I love this car. It's a great 240Z. In fact, I'm building a 240. Z myself right now, my son and I, it's a project that we're working on together and really blending new technology with an old school car. Before we head to break, let's check back outside with the Factory 5 Racing time-lapse camera to see their progress on the Daytona Coupe. My goodness, it looks like they're cranking away. And still to come on Power Nation, we'll unveil this car in the Covercraft booth and see which race car drivers Gannon has caught up with. Stay with us. I got to tell you, Matt's a pretty dang good fisherman.
We're back at the 2018 SEMA show and I've made my way over to the Covercraft booth where I found my buddy LT. Now LT, I cannot wait to see what's under these silks. Well, I can't wait to help you unveil these maybe just a little bit. But first, there's a lot to talk about when it comes to car and seat covers here at Covercraft. For over 50 years, car and truck enthusiasts have trusted Covercraft with their most precious possessions. And this year, the world's largest car cover manufacturer is also the largest seat cover manufacturer in the world. We purchased a company called GT Covers that manufactures a premium seat cover line, as well as a company called Marathon Seat Covers that has an equally premium seat cover line. Regardless of how you use your vehicle, there's a seat cover for everybody at Covercraft. Whether you like to spend some time playing in the woods or you have a higher mileage daily driver that you want to refresh the look and feel of with the precision fit seat covers. And then you have my favorite, the custom sheepskin covers. Now, these are for the ultimate in comfort. These precision fit covers are revolutionary, precisely made to fit like a permanent replacement cover. They're available for most light trucks and SUVs and come with detailed instructions on how to properly install them yourself. Underneath, they have a foam backing stitched in for comfort and are proudly made in the USA. In addition to the popular Carhartt duckweave fabric, they just introduced a line featuring Prime One camo with natural patterns and organic shapes of predators in the wild. Speaking of wild, under this Covercraft car cover is a wild story about a Corvette restoration that went terribly wrong. It's about to be unveiled in front of owner Gaston Le Goberu by his builder Jeff Page of Heartland Customs. I'm speechless. I have no idea how to even feel about this thing. I've been waiting for this car for three years. Just before his vet was to debut at SEMA last year, while on the way to the paint shop, this truck tire flung off a semi and split the body in half. 18 months later, they're here in the Covercraft booth. They're the world's best car cover company. It's unreal, the stuff they do. All their products are top of the line. We needed somebody that could make a car cover that was just as high quality as the cars that we build. All right, guys, if you want to take your positions there, we'll, we'll roll her off, moment of truth. Oh my God, oh my God, look at this thing. This is my dad's dream car and I bought it on eBay a million years ago. I tried to screw around in my garage and then one day I saw an um, article in a magazine. These guys did something to a 58, inspired me, shipped it over to Oklahoma and uh, I haven't seen it in three years. That's amazing. Our partnership with Hardline Customs has been about four or five years in the making. Uh, we've made custom car covers for them for many years. They built a fantastic vehicle, and we'd love to have them in our booth because they bring a uh, attraction like this. This is insane. Thanks, LT. All right, take a look at the live build of the Factory 5 Racing Daytona Coupe. If you want to see the entire time-lapse camera video, just go to PowerNationTV.com. It is so awesome to see how good these guys are. Have you ever dreamed about your car becoming a Hot Wheels car? Well, that dream can become a reality. Here's Mark. That is exactly the chance given to 15 lucky finalists on the Hot Wheels Legends Tour. Each on display at SEMA for fans and celebrity judges, including YouTube influencer Tanner Fox, British car designer and car collector Magnus Walker, the one and only Jay Leno, and Hot Wheels Senior VP and Global Brand Manager Chris Down. The toughest thing are those uh, are those moments where you know that there are more than one one pick that you want to make and there's just no way. So this was a pretty tough decision, although I will say that I had a lot more stress before the final judges meeting. I could not believe how many of the judges really aligned in the same place. It was it was a surprise. All that said, the winner of the SEMA Hot Wheels Legends Tour is Luis Rodriguez and the two Jets. All right, well, I'm here with the winner, Luis Rodriguez. You just took home the trophy. It's got a blank spot in there for your car to go. That is so exciting. How do you feel? Absolutely ecstatic. I can't believe I'm here, and I can't believe I won. <laughs> I've always been a fan of Hot Wheels and always been a fan of cars, and the ability to, to take my dreams and make them a reality and have the opportunity to actually see 
my car as a toy, inspiring future generations of car builders, could not be a greater prize in itself. Well, there you have it, folks. The newest Hot Wheels car is the 2Jet Z, and it's coming to a retail shelf near you. Race car drivers from all different series are always at SEMA. Let's check back in with Gannon and see who he's found. Our friend Antron Brown, man, how you doing? You have a good time here at SEMA? Man, I'm having a great time, man. Just looking at all these car enthusiasts. We're over at the Shell booth just chilling out, man, but it's so much action, man. Everything's so live. It's, it's, it's like a rock concert with cars involved. I caught up with the man himself, John Forrest. Man, you having fun at SEMA? Can you believe the crowds here at SEMA? It's crazy. It's the biggest that I've ever seen it. But uh, we're here at the PPG booth and the lines. We've been going for over an hour. Robert Height, myself, my daughter Brittany and Courtney. Yeah. Uh, it's exciting time. It is, man. It's funny. Like, you're always going to be my favorite drag racer of all time. And in Tucson, when you guys weren't racing in the offseason, I actually used to skip school to go watch you test in Tucson. So, you know, being here at SEMA, hanging out with you, it's almost surreal. And it's also an industry where we get to see and meet a lot of people that we don't get to see all year long. And, you know, it's pretty cool, right? Well, I've been around a long time. And, and your dad skipped school to come watch me. <laughs> he actually did. So, Joey, man, you having a good time at SEMA? I'm having a great time. I just got here, though. I got to uh, see the uh, Pennzoil booth over here, which has been cool. Checking out the new Hennessy Raptor. Yeah, which yeah. Which is badass. It so, is very uh, cool. I want to drive it. I got you. <laughs> but it's a great time in America, and it's a great time for NHRA drag racing. When you think of me, think of PPG. I need a job. <laughs> John Force, everybody. There's only one of him. <laughs> Thanks, Gannon, and still to come on Power Nation on the road, trucks, and the latest in blasting. Welcome back to the 2018 SEMA show in Las Vegas. The time is now to head back out to the Factory 5 racing booth, where a good buddy of ours and a familiar face and name to many of you, Joey Logano is going to fire up the engine for the first time. Let's fire it up. It's going to be loud. Yeah, Push the clock. Yeah. Hold your ears. Wow, that coupe sounds fantastic. Now, we've been giving you a behind the scenes look at some of the amazing products here at SEMA. Here's one that as many of your projects probably started with, blasting. Here's Eliza. One of the cool things about SEMA is all the new technology and the up and coming markets. And we found this gem. Dustless blasting is a concept for those of you looking to start a new career. This is Jennifer Walker, Vice President of Marketing Jennifer, so you want to help people start their own business. Tell us about that. We absolutely do. You know, our machines originally were helping independent shop owners stop outsourcing. And what we found was you can't bring everything into a shop setting. So why not make it mobile? And in doing so, we've given a business opportunity to people all over the world. We are very fortunate to offer a patented Venturi-based suction system, which is unlike no other. Most other blasting methods are gravity fed, which means everything's trying to race out of the bottom of the pot all at once, creating issues all its own. And we've eliminated that with our suction system. By adding water to the media, you're actually making the media more powerful and more efficient. At the same time, you're using a third less media than you would with traditional sandblasting methods. We're at SEMA, and you started in the automotive industry, but there's many opportunities outside. Most definitely, and we hear about new things every day. We typically highlight 12 applications on our website, and they go anywhere from the marine industry to graffiti removal, concrete restoration, and even things like um, onshore and offshore industry. And the great thing about it is, because we introduce water into the blast tank, We've eliminated the dust plume, and we've reduced the heat that was generated from other blasting methods. So who's the perfect candidate for your system? You know, anyone is a perfect candidate for this business. You don't have to be a millionaire to be in business for yourself, and we are proud to make this a really viable option for them. We've seen people from retired individuals, recent college graduates, and everything in between, and we're just 
happy and excited to be able to promote a new business opportunity for them. So marketing is always a question when you're starting your own business, but you can help with that. We definitely like to help with that because we know getting into business for yourself can be a little bit alarming because they don't know where to start and that's why we're here. So we have several marketing options available for them. One of the most important being an online presence because we understand the importance of getting their name out in their community so that they can be successful. For those that have never started a business before, financing can be a question. Yes, it is, and that is typically, everybody sees our machines and they're like, that is such a phenomenal product, but how am I gonna pay for it? And really, in the last year, we are very excited to offer new financing options for them. We have partnerships with several different banking facilities that allow them to secure financing so that they can get started in this business for themselves. Jennifer, thank you for your time. It's an exciting time for your company, but an exciting time for those that are interested in your systems as well. Thanks, Eliza. Well, trucks are still outselling cars, so for the latest trends and pickups, let's go ahead and send it on over to LT. When it comes to pickups, the trend this year is definitely big, flashy, and colorful. Guys are putting massive lifts on their trucks to clear oversized tires, then they'll powder coat suspension parts a bright accent color, then they'll add oversized polished aluminum wheels. It's one thing to have a big truck sitting on a massive set of wheels and tires at a fixed ride height. But if you throw a little bit of adjustment into the mix, you can really improve the functionality of your lifted truck. This F-350 is currently sitting 10 to 12 inches taller than a stock version and is rolling on a 42 inch tall tire. But there's one thing that sets this Ford apart from the rest of the trucks at the show. Instead of springs, this truck rides on air, providing a smooth ride, 10 inches of height adjustment, and an improved payload capacity. So by having an adjustable air suspension on your lifted truck, you really have the best of both worlds. This new suspension system is making waves at the show and it's a blast to watch it in action. It uses a combination of hydraulic rams and coilover shocks. And as its name suggests, it will adjust to any level. You can keep this thing at a stock ride height and use stock wheels and tires or lift it up 13 inches higher and put on a massive set of 42s. One thing you'll find on the front end of a lot of trucks here at the show is a different grill and a better bumper. Now this will really make the front of your truck stand apart from the crowd. A lot of guys are installing these fabricated grills that'll have a gloss black surround and some polished hardware. And a fabricated bumper really toughens up the look of the front of your truck. It gives you a place to add some aftermarket lighting and you can even add a splash of color for that extra special touch. If you want to totally transform the look of your truck, you could install a grumper. This is a combination between a grill and a bumper, and you can't even tell that this is a Ram truck. And on top of that, you can install a Vicowl, combination between a visor and a cowling. Thanks, LT. Still to come, the Power Nation OPGI win big contest winner and power walking with Gannon. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Power Nation on the road, the 2018 SEMA show. Now I've made my way over to Original Parts Group to announce the winner of the Power Nation OPGI Win Big Contest. And it happens to be our new friend, Scott Dawson from Washington. First, congratulations. Thank you, thank you very much. Now That's I gotta great. know, how many times did you enter? One time, my wife entered me one time. Big props to your wife. Yeah, she's awesome. <laughs> now what car are you gonna be restoring? I'm going to be restoring a 1972 Buick uh, Skylark Sun Coupe. Why is this such an impactful time in your life right now? Well, we recently had a house fire, and so that was putting things a little on hold, and uh, somehow this happened, and this is a real lucky deal for us, so pretty happy. Congrats again, Scott, and it's time now to bring in our buddy Mark Chris from Detroit Muscle to tell us how he might want to spend this gift card. That's right, Scott. We use OPGI parts on a lot of our projects in our shop, so I'm going to show you how you can jazz up that Skylark. Based in Seal Beach, California, Original Parts Group, or OPGI, is the place to go when looking for restoration parts for your classic GM. And with over 100,000 square feet of parts in stock, they'll surely have what you're looking for. Our customer is an enthusiast who enjoys working on their cars on the weekends and has a, has a love for, for muscle cars, in particular General Motors, cars of the 60s, Chevelles, GTOs, Cutlass 442, Skylark GS is coming on big. 
all of those vehicles. The other thing that we do is classic Cadillac parts of the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Now, if I was Scott and I was getting ready to go on a shopping spree for my Skylark, well, I'd be right here, getting things like door handles, mirrors, and probably some bumpers and emblems as well. But hey, that's just me. I like the shiny stuff. But it takes more than flashy chrome to get you home when it comes to restoring a classic muscle car. There's all the stuff you can't see, like seals, wiring, suspension, and brakes. They have everything you need top to bottom and front to back to make your classic GM look the way it did when it rolled off the assembly line. One great example of that is this 66 Chevelle that they have here on display. You can see that OPGI prides itself on the fit and finish of its components. Plus, they've got color catalogs for everything, so all the guesswork has been taken out. Just flip through and find what you need and either give them a call or order the parts directly from their website, opgi.com. Suffice to say, Scott won't have any problem finding the parts he needs for his Skylark. It's awesome when you can get into things that you love and do well at it, and you have customers that love it, and it's great for everybody. And you know, OPGI now has restoration parts for Corvairs as well, like this beautiful car that suits you just perfectly. You should buy it. And I think you are a good spender of other people's money. All right, it's time now to send it over to Gannon. This is something that I call power walking. It's a chance for me to walk around SEMA, meet people. I mean, it's really fun because they don't know what questions I'm going to ask. And to be honest, I don't even know what I'm going to ask. Let's do it. No. <laughs> what was your first car? My first car was a Cutlass 82 Oldsmobile with leather seats with the fur on it. <laughs> it had the fur. <laughs> yeah, it had the fur and the, it had the house speaker in the back. Huh. It would crash. Oh, I was I was at the mall with a girlfriend and I was looking at where was I was looking at some guy and I <laughs> I hit the back of a car. You ever had anything repossessed? No. <laughs> I have, <laughs> and it's embarrassing. <laughs> My first car, of course, was this manual transmission. Bought it. Parents said, you can't drive it till you really know how to drive a manual. Well, I came home from lunch from high school, thought I would pull it out in front of my new smoking hot girlfriend, or so <laughs> I thought. Pull it up in front of the entire school, stall it eight times, completely had to get out of the car. It overheated, burned the clutch out, and had to be towed away. Anthony, if SEMA was like a, a type of food, what what kind of type what kind of food would it be? To you? Uh, probably steak is the biggest show going. What was your first car? My first car is was a Volkswagen Beetle. Can you believe that? You know, and it was so reliable that uh, if it broke, you you, you could uh, you, you could fix it with wires and bubble gum. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I have some stories in the car that I can't talk about on TV. <laughs> There you go, that was Power Walk, and I had a great time meeting people from all over the world, asking all kinds of fun questions. Now it's time to go have some more fun. Here at SEMA, all of our hosts have to pick their favorite rides, so I'm gonna start. If you know me, you know that I love a Bronco, so I had to go with the 74 Bronco. It's an all steel body by United Pacific, built by Max Slider Brothers Customs, who dropped in a 5.0 Coyote engine and it's painted this gorgeous PPG Pacific blue color. Now let's see what some of our other hosts have found. When it comes to choosing a favorite vehicle, you can probably guess that I'm gonna choose a pickup truck. This is a 2019 Chevy Silverado. They've only been available to the public for a few short months now. This one has already been completely customized. It's sitting on a different chassis, it's been airbagged, and the rockers are sitting flat on the ground. Out back is sitting on a massive 26 inch wheel with a really deep lip and a nice little accent of color. Now there are a lot of low trucks here, but what sets this one apart for me is how clean and simple it is. There are no crazy over the top graphics that'll date this truck, so this Silverado is definitely going to stand the test of time. Everybody has a SEMA favorite and this is mine. This is a beautifully done 1947 Dodge Power Wagon. What caught my eye is that it is sitting on a K5 Blazer frame. Has Dana 44 in the front, Dana 60 in the rear, full functioning Chevy drivetrain. It's a gorgeous, clean build. And another one of my favorite rides. Friends, you have to check out this 1974 Plymouth Thruster they call Casper. Get this, after Katrina, the only thing left of this ride was the body. So the Common Power Nation on the road, we're gonna be talking more of our favorite rides. Plus, we're gonna be doing the payoff of the Factory 5 at Daytona Coupe. And yes, I will be strapping in. Stay with us.
Power Nation on the Road is brought to you by Factory 5 Racing, the world's leading manufacturer of build-it-yourself car kits, and by Original Parts Group, premium quality GM restoration and performance parts since 1982. We're wrapping up our coverage from the 2018 SEMA show in Las Vegas. Now, this is a show that is close to the public, but that's okay, because we're taking you on the inside. Here are a few more favorite rides from our hosts. When I'm picking my favorite cars here at the SEMA show, there's four major things I look for. Performance, appearance, quality, and of course, attention to detail. And this second gen Camaro built by the Roadster Shop, it delivers in all four categories in a big way. Without a question, this is my pick. It's Ken Block's 1965 Mustang. It's all wheel drive, 1400 horsepower, twin turbo. It's a famous car too, because you've probably seen it on YouTube. It's got like a gazillion views. Jim Connor 7 came out, and this car is in a league of its own, in my opinion, because it's just awesome. That's my pick. SEMA continues to look forward in our industry, which means encouraging the future generations of builders and mechanics. Eliza happens to be with the Hot Riders of tomorrow. Thanks, Katie. We're moments away of the startup of the engine building challenge of the Hot Rodders of Tomorrow. And I know how bad they want it because I'm a product of high school auto technology. Top teams from all across the United States get to come to the SEMA show to be featured in tearing apart a small block Chevy and putting it back together using nothing but basic hand tools. So it's skill, accuracy, uh, their ability to work together as a team, communicate effectively, and ultimately to work together for the end result to tear the engine apart, put it back together, mistake free. I've always worked on cars all my life, and I can't help but when I see a motor, I just get excited. The big thing is the scholarship dollars. Thanks to our scholarship uh, partners with our tech schools, we have Sam Tech, we have UTI, and we have OTC. All of them have stepped forward, and they have given over $5 million in scholarship money that can change these kids' lives, open up doors so they can go on to learn to work with their hands. My grandpa, he started me whenever I was uh, about six, I think, we went to a dirt track, and. Uh, Loved it ever since. I always helped him work on cars, and whenever I, I dreamed about going to NASCAR Tech, and that's where I plan to go next August. Future, I want to own my own shop. Tons of cars, tons of trucks. Do all sorts of engine swaps, drag racing, all sorts of stuff. My heart is pounding for them. I'm so nervous and excited for them. They finished under 30 minutes. It is safe to say, Katie, that the automotive industry is in good hands. Thanks, Eliza. Those kids have a bright future ahead of them. Well, one last look at the Factory 5 time-lapse camera as the project wraps up. And if you'd like to see the entire Daytona build in less than four minutes, just go to PowerNationTV.com. Such a great job, guys. Now I've made my way outside to Ford out front, the drift track, and I'm inside the finished Factory 5 Racing Daytona Coupe. And in the driver's seat, it's Dave Smith. You must be so excited and proud of your team. They did a great job. Three days of hard work, and now we're going to have all the fun. Ooh. All right, let's do it. Hey, Katie, it's a good idea. You know, guys built the car in three days. Maybe we should warm it up, take it easy I on the car. I think you're probably right. No, let's go. No. <laughs> I trust you. I trust the crew. I trust the product. All right, let's drop the hammer. Do it.
My friends, what a great way to wrap up our coverage from the 2018 SEMA show in Las Vegas. My takeaway from the event, we definitely burned some rubber. This is our GoPro from the rear wheel of the Daytona, completely covered in tire tread. I'm Katie Osborne, and for Lawrence L.T. Tolman, Mark Christ, Eliza Leone, and Gannon Pritchard, we thank you for watching. We'll see you next time we take Power Nation on the road.